Welcome back to Fine Art Diary. Today we are going to do this beautiful textural abstract painting. This is the fourth painting of the series. And before doing anything, let's check the materials I am going to use today. First of all, this is gesso. And many of you asked in last two videos, what is a gesso? So this is basically a primer for the canvas. And it is easily available in any art store. This acrylic gloss medium we can use as a binder of the pigments. I am going to use some spatulas. Some can be very helpful for creating textures. For creating textures we can be a little creative and can use some found objects like this comb, the sea sponge of different textures and maybe some random sticks. This is a brush I have made in my studio. I generally use this brush to create some pores-like textures. These are some color pencils, sanguine, red chalk and water-soluble graphite. So marks from these pencils can be a major part of the painting. Definitely I am going to use these color pigments and acrylic colors. So let's start the painting. Here I am using a 20 by 20 inch canvas stuck on a board. The canvas is of 10 ounce medium grain. So first of all, let's start with creating the textures by using gesso. So without any preconceived thought, I am just randomly applying the gesso. In this stage, it really doesn't matter where I am pouring the gesso because it is going to be an intuitional painting and spontaneously the shapes, the textures should come. Why is it necessary to create texture on a painting? Because it is one of the elements of the painting. So there can be two ways we can create texture. One is by creating the bumpiness on the surface, like the texture you can feel by touching with your fingers, what we are doing right now. And the other way of creating textures will be with the colors. You cannot feel the texture by touching it, but there will be visual illusion of textures. So both the ways the textures can be created. Now let's create some different kind of marks by using the comb. Sponge is also very useful to create some organic textures. That's fine. Now let's add some lines to it. Now let's use this brush and as we discussed previously, it is going to help to create some porous textures. I am just trying to get variations in texture. Now going back to my spatula and just by dabbing it, I am going to create some marks. That's alright, now let's check what we have got so far. You can see how all the textures are different from each other. So we are getting variations and I am liking it. That's alright, now I will let the surface dry completely and we will move to the next step. Let's give some construction marks on the canvas. So once again, I am using the making and breaking concept. Those who follow my videos, you know the concept, but here I will explain it once again. A blank canvas is a solid rectangular shape. So by creating the texture, I am distorting that shape. That means I am breaking that shape. Now, by creating some construction lines, once again, I am making something. And the next stage, once again, will be breaking those shapes. So like this, the canvas will get maturity. So far, nothing is planned over here. 
whatever I am doing is intuitional. I am getting the inspiration from the canvas itself and I am just doing it without thinking too much. That's all right. Now it's time to add some colors. And this is Kaput Mortem. You can use any dark brown color for this. I am just randomly spreading the pigment. My color palette will be very limited in this. The next pigment is Prussian Blue. And you can see I am choosing cool colors today. Because last two paintings we did with warm colors. So I decided to go with cool colors this time. Alright, and the next pigment is Green Earth. I will try to get some beautiful grey in this painting. If you want, you can choose some other colors and definitely that will also work. Now let's take another earth color and that is brown ochre. This color is going to complement Prussian blue. I have seen beautiful grays by mixing Prussian blue and brown ochre. Now I am going to scatter everything so it's time to break the shapes. Here I am using the acrylic gloss medium and this is going to work as a binder for the pigments. You can see I have added the medium wherever pigments are there. Now let's moist the canvas a little bit. Now by using a brush let's spread the pigments. Here I will follow one thing. Though I am scattering everything, I will try to follow the pencil marks we have given previously. And another thing you have noticed, I am not trying too much blending over here. I don't want that. I want to keep individual areas to be of different hues. And obviously I discussed many times that in these stages we have to be very spontaneous. Right now I don't have any preconceived thoughts. I am just following my heart. Whatever I am liking, I am just giving the brush strokes that way. That's alright. Now I will let it dry for some time and we will come back. Alright, you can see how beautiful grays we are getting over here. So in the next stage, we are going to rebuild some of the areas. So that will be the making stage once again. So by following the previously given marks, let's exaggerate some of the areas. For this, I have mixed Prussian Blue and Raw Umber. My intention is to increase the contrast of this painting. So whatever the marks I am giving right now, I am following two things. First of all the pencil marks I have given previously and the second thing is whatever the color stains I got from my pigment layer. So I am getting inspired by those organic random shapes and trying to exaggerate some of the areas. Bringing back some of the whites and adding some smaller shapes now. The initial drawing marks are showing me the path what I am following right now. In the beginning the brush strokes should be very rapid and towards the end my brush strokes are very very slow.
This area is going to be my focal point, so I will be adding more marks in this area. I already had a bigger circle, so making a smaller circle for the repetition of the shapes. Sometimes masking the shapes like this can be very helpful. I am towards the end of this painting, so let's add some lines. Alright, I am done with this painting and here are some of the close-ups. Hope you enjoyed today's session and don't forget to subscribe the channel because many more painting techniques are coming in future. If you are having any suggestion, please write down in the comment box. Thank you very much for watching.